In this video, I wanted to go over how you could make uh, very basic plugins within Stride, uh, at least a plugin involving this editor scene view here. Fortunately, Stride still doesn't have um, at least an easy way to create a plugin using the property grid or uh, a windowed platform. It has to be within the actual scene editor. Um, so you can see up here, I have an actual default uh, Stride UI um, that gets the distance of this from point zero zero zero. Um, and the reason I have that up there is it's actually updating at runtime. So you can see, or not at runtime, at design time, sorry. You can actually see when I move this around, it updates uh, the UI. So you can have UI within Stride that can execute commands within this scene, which is really cool. Um, and another thing I did was that now we can see the distance. So at five, uh, at a distance of five, uh, units it should switch to the cube and at a distance of 10 units it should switch to the plane so we can see here if we hit five it goes to a cube and if we hit uh, 10 it goes to the plane mesh um, so this is all running at design time which without an entity processor would not be possible um, and it's really easy to set up uh, so i'll show you the code for that now so this here is the actual entity component uh, all i have is a model component uh, property as well as the UI test. You don't have to do this. I just wanted to use this as an example. And then I have the LOD data here. So it's going to switch between these models based on the distance. Um, and this is actually named wrong, shouldn't be activate, but whatever. Um, and in this uh, component, what we have here is the default entity processor, which is what was talked about in the last video, but I'm using the execution mode editor. Um, so this will actually run both at runtime and in editor. Um, then Few other attributes here that aren't too important just a data contract so i can attach it to the entity and a component category so i can easily organize it within the actual editor itself um, the most important thing here is this execution mode is running within editor and that's the only reason this works not only at runtime but it works in game studio as well the other component here is the processor uh, so this is the system that actually updates everything so everything is running within the draw call which i believe is updated after the update uh, method, which you can also use in here, um, but I wanted access to the render context. This render context gives us access, access to the services that are registered within Stride, and we can access the scene system here to get the main camera within the scene view. What this main camera gets is the, it tries to retrieve the camera that is used to render the scene. Um, this is one limitation I found with this, is in the editor, it can't track the camera position as far as I can tell. Um, I need to do more testing because I feel like there must be a way. I just haven't found it. Um, so in, in runtime, this works fine, but in editor, uh, it uses the vector 0. 0.000. Um, so that's one limitation for this here. Um, the other limitation here uh, is this UI page here. Um, so whenever a, an asset is reloaded within the scene, um, for some reason, the reference of the page gets lost. Uh, so I have to reattach it within the editor uh, for the changes to start taking effect. So in an entity processor, it's very important to do null checks or else this will cause a lot of issues and it'll start not crashing the editor, but make it almost unusable um, until you fix this issue. And it does not tell you where it's failing. So... <laughs> Be very careful if you're using entity processors because it can cause a lot of headaches if you don't know uh, what you're doing. Um, so all this is doing is it's editing or updating the UI uh, text. So it's getting the distance and just telling you the distance within the UI. You should be able to also use the uh, UI buttons to execute functions um, within the editor view uh, at, at design time. So. I'm hoping there's a way to create a sort of pseudo terrain editor uh, using this system. Um, I have to do a lot more research. I don't uh, fully understand the rendering of terrain myself, so it's not gonna be coming for me anytime soon, um, but this should lead the way for anyone who actually knows how rendering works to uh, hopefully do that. Um, and then that's the UI part. The final part is the actual updating of models at design time and runtime. Um, so this is very simple. It's just a very basic LOD script. Basically, once the entity gets too far from the target point, uh, in this case, it should be the camera, um, it'll change the model. Um, and that's, that's it. It's very simple. 
Um, and that's the entirety of it. So this uh, entity processor is also checking for two things. Um, so we want to make sure this entity processor only grabs entities that have both the entity uh, LOD entity component and the model component attached to it. If it only has one or the other, it should not show up in this processor. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. If you want to filter based on the components that are in an, uh, in an entity, this is how you would do that. And that's it. So we now have a very simple LOD script uh, that updates an editor just by dragging it around. Uh, this is not a best example because it should be tracking the camera. Unfortunately, that limitation kind of blocked me. And at runtime, you should be able to actually see it working at runtime, which I'm lying to. You. And you know why? Because I specified specifically the editor. Um, so it should be under components. We don't want to specify anything at all here. I think we can actually specify all. There we go. So we can do that there. Save. The all is the default, by the way. So if you only want it to run at runtime, make sure execution mode dot runtime is set. And now if we rerun it, we can see now that it's actually editing at runtime as well. So that's the uh, gist of entity components. I don't think there's any gonna, gonna be any more videos, um, at least today, uh, regarding these. Uh, but this is just a really cool uh, introduction to entity components, thanks to someone who updated the docs. I think his name was Raphael. In GitHub, uh, absolute saint, uh, honestly saved me a lot of headaches just trying to figure this out myself. So thanks to him for the docs. Without his help, it would have been a much bigger pain looking into this myself and trying to figure everything out. So <laughs> um, I'll link him and I'll link his PR in the description so you can follow it uh, at your leisure. Um, and hopefully this video helped show you something new. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, let me know down below.